What is going on everybody? Welcome to your 87th and the last tutorial in Java uh, programming, whatever I named it. And this is the last tutorial in Java programming because after this, I'm going to start a new series and it's going to be like intermediate Java programming. Because, I mean, we can only continue this beginner series for so long and there's so much Java to go over. So, this 87th video is the last in this series. But after this, there's going to be like 50 more intermediate videos, hopefully, if I ever find the time. And also, there after that, it's going to be more expert. I just can't have like 200 videos in a playlist or else it'll seem kind of weird. So that's why this is going to be the last video in this series. But trust me, we're not done Java yet. And aside from this, my hardcore core Java followers are probably like, all right, what happened to Java game development? I thought we were like halfway through that. Well, we're going to be continuing Java game development, but in the meantime, we need to go over some basics because we're going to be using that in our uh, game programming. So, if you're wondering and worried about, all right, I want to get back to game development, trust me guys, we will build games in Java, but first, we need to learn some more basics. So, what we're going to be going over in this tutorial is a couple things about strings, and I know we talked about strings before, but we never really talked about all the things that we can do with strings so let's go ahead and make a couple more strings right now I'm gonna name mine a B and C and I'll set a equal to apples I said a lot of things equal equal to apples I just noticed that string B set this equal to Bucky and string C set this equal to Bucky but make it sure it's all in caps and spell it right it's crucial so now we have string A, B, and C. All right, nothing we've never seen before. Now we already know a couple cool things that we can do, like system out print line, and we can get like the length of a string using a dot length. And let me just test this to make sure it works. Um, good. And now, there we go. And now we can see six right here. So I mean, we already learned a few things like how we can get the length using calling the length from the string class. But we can also do a couple more things. And the first thing I want to teach you guys how to do is compare strings. Now it's a little different than you guys might think. So let's go ahead and make it if statement. And what you would usually do is if um, a is equal to um, this and whatever you know whatever comparison you want using two equal signs and this is how we learned to compare things before but whenever we compare strings what we need to do is we need to use the equals method so here's what you do put a which is apples if this equals and then in your equals you go ahead and write what you want it to equal to if a equals apples, which it does, what do we want to do? Just go ahead and put system out like, let's go ahead and just copy this. System out print line. Um, it equals apples. Put that in a string. So let's run this and see what we get after we get rid of that. There we go. Run it and see what we get in it says an error because I didn't use these two things yet, B or C, so that's why we're getting that. It equals apples, bam, so this worked. And if you're wondering, all right, you just told me to do that, but why can't I use the two equal sign? Well, here's the background for you guys who are just so curious. When you use the two equal signs, it, how do I say this? If two objects are identical, which means they have the same contents, but they're two separate objects themselves, then it's going to be false. And this happens a lot in strings. It wouldn't happen in this case, but it's just, it just can cause a lot of confusion. So with the two equal sign, just remember, if you try to compare with two equal signs and you kept getting an error, that means that you have, I mean, they could be the same object. They go could be both set to apples, but the, if they aren't the same object, then it's going to be false. So that's why you always need to use the equals method, and that's why they built this method for only strings. If you're wondering, all right, why isn't this in any other class? Because no other class causes problems. What the equals method does is it compares the contents of it, and that's what you always want to do when you're comparing strings. So I mean, bam, that's that. And why did I have these two little things right here? Well, we can go ahead and compare these 
by just doing a little quick copy paste and we'll put like if B equals C um, this is just to demonstrate that you can't that two strings without the same casing is different so what do we want to write Bucky's match right there so if string B equals string C which they're both Bucky let's see what we get run and it says Bucky's match nope we didn't get a Bucky's match so let's go ahead and now we can see that alright this Bucky does not equal this Bucky but what if we're writing a computer program and we want them to like type their name or something and we don't care about casing then how can we compare two strings with kind of forgetting about casing well, what we need to do is this put equals ignore case and now let's see what we get and now look at this it says Bucky's match so again what I'm trying to demonstrate is anytime you want to compare two strings and you don't want to have to worry about case then what you do is put B dot equals ignore case and it's going to compare your two strings just like before but it's going to take the case of it and pretty much forget about it say just the contents of Bucky equals Bucky no matter what the casing bam as you can clearly see so that's that for this tutorial and again like I said when you're moving on from this tutorial don't look for an 88th video there's not going to be one you are now ready to go to intermediate Java programming and I'm going to be building the first tutorial of that next and it's going to be a continuation of strings so with that being said I just want to thank you guys you finally made it through you learned so much Java in this series and I cannot wait to see you next time so don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you then